What is up everybody? This is Michael File Sage checking in here today. I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, so today I wanted to show you guys a quick update on how the sort of contaminated slash weird growing um, projects I've got going on are doing. So I wanted to give you guys a little update on those. That includes the um, Starry Night uh, top fruiting jars, right? And also it includes the McKenai, the fluffy McKenai, the super fluffy McKenai that has been spawned on the 22nd. So quite a long time, over a month now, it's been um, since spawning to bulk. And um, just a bunch of other things uh, unrelated to contamination or like non-fruiting or anything like that. Just a quick, that's what, it's like a mini state of the grow basically. So um, I say mini because I'm not gonna show you guys all of what I've got going on. Uh, so just a little update video guys. I hope you guys enjoy. So uh, let's talk about this tub. Okay, so this tub is super weird, the McKenna tub. I've been quarantining this in another room just because I noticed that there's quite a bit of metabolites actually starting to form on the cloudy top. Uh, as you can see, as I'm sure you guys notice, there is a lot of water pooling on top. And that is because I did not open this tub for about a week. And then before making this video, I opened it to see what was going on. And when I opened it, a lot of the water from the lid fell onto the substrate. So in short guys, they were not in this waterlogged state this whole time. So if you remember, this used to be completely white. And now it is looking sort of brownish tones, weird tones. And as you can see, there are lots of metabolites. And the reason I moved it is just in case it was, it could be mycogon. Uh, which is a kind of fungus that you really don't want spreading. I'm doing this for you guys. I know this is not good to be showing you guys here, but and what I mean by that is that you definitely don't want to be opening up sketchy stuff inside your grow area. I'm very well conscious, uh, as you saw, about what I'm doing. This is not something that you want to do. Uh, it's not a risk you want to take. I'm just doing it for the sake of the video, for the lighting. And personally, I don't really mind if everything else does get contaminated, which I don't think it will. But just in case it does, um, well, that's sort of to show you guys. And hopefully you guys can learn from uh, direct documented experience on my channel. All right, back to the video, guys. Just in case it is very, very sketchy. But, you know, mycogon, a lot of things can look like mycogon for various reasons. You know, that, uh, mycelium could look all sorts of weird stuff if you leave it on its own uh, when it's when it's uh, contaminated, especially like these guys. You know, if you guys remember, it looked like, like picture perfect trichoderma when it was new. Uh, so I was I was almost certain it was trichoderma. It was just bacterial mycelium. Um, but anyways, so I was taking a look at this, right? And do you guys see what I see there? That is a little spot of red. And I should definitely not be opening this right now, but I will be dumping this today ASAP. So I don't even want to leave this open for too long. But as you can see, I just want to record it. Look at that fluffy weird blob there, guys. For, uh, for research purposes, I'm just leaving this as documentation. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to be dumping this guy, so. Bye bye. So moving on, so I alcohol wiped my hands because I don't want anything spreading from my hands to these jars or anything else. So um, let's move on to the bacterial top fruiters, the starry nights, okay? Well, it's been quite a while. It's almost, it, it's over uh, two months that these guys have been, uh, since I uh, inoculated these jars. So anyways, let's take a look. If you guys remember, I'm top fruiting these. I put a little bit of core on there right and some weird white fluffy mycelium came up um so generally with top fruiters once you start getting fruits or they get big then you could put like a plastic bag on there like a ziploc but there's plenty of space in here right so i'm not bothering to i'm just leaving it a little bit unscrewed you know so that they get air exchange this guy's got a hole on the top as well so i'm not they seem to be getting enough air exchange i think but uh as you can see they are still not pinning they're not, there's no mold or anything like that. They're not contaminated. They smell like mushrooms, um, but I feel like we're getting closer and closer to pinning. So yeah, it looks pretty cool. They're kind of hard to mist. They're kind of hard to mist. 
because from above it's like a lot of it doesn't go inside uh, or it misses certain spots so for a while i was like missing it a little bit more directly like put the nozzle in there and clearly it's not good for it because it's it's too direct so as you can see towards the center you can see some yellowing mycelium from the stress all of them have that because i did that for a little bit yeah this one especially but it's just a little bit of stress that's all yeah see towards the center so i'm uh i'm doing it a little bit of far now and it's it seems to be working out pretty well and most of the time i'm just neglecting it just letting them do their thing so as you can see they're basically like pretty much fully colonized here on the side as you can see lots of mycelium coming up and I was looking at these blobs on the side and I was like, ooh, I wonder if uh, maybe we're starting to get a little bit of uh, Primordia coming on. Um, I, I don't want to get my hopes up. I don't think it is. It might just be another bacterial blob, but uh, well, who knows? Hopefully, hopefully. So yeah, so th that's the update with all the contamination stuff. Uh, so I just want to show you guys some of the non-contaminated uh, stuff that I think is uh, kind of interesting. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on. I got a bunch of fruits going. I got some real big chomper chonkers on uh, some Florida grass lovers right now. And uh, another tub is doing some really weird stuff on the walls. Um, so I will be posting those videos, update videos on Patreon soon, uh, today or tomorrow. So I want to show you guys just basically um, this jar right here. Uh, this is a natty light and as you can see the the peaks of agar once I inoculated and I shook it just to one second like just just like one or two shakes and then it just got stuck on the side so I hate it when that happens but thankfully there was another little piece of agar on there somewhere so that's why this guy took a while to colonize it took about a month but that's understandable because it wasn't even touching most of the agar so as you can see the natty light is almost ready to send so yeah, I wonder how these guys do. I always suspected this guy was uh, bacterial. This was the only bit of mycelial growth I was able to get from a swab. So I'm thankful that I have any, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. I wonder how this guy grows out. Hopefully it's not like the McKenna because that's sort of the McKenna story. It was the only bit of mycelium that germinated from a spore syringe. So fingers crossed, guys. Fingers crossed. And over here, if you guys remember, uh, in the last State of the Grow video, I talked to, to you guys about uh, this kind of bag fruiting technique that uh, I was uh, trying to trying to do and um, basically sort of recreating a shotgun fruiting chamber inside a smaller medium in this case a two gallon uh, Ziploc freezer bag so um, I put a tray this is a pool lover tray uh, I forgot the data but it's been it's been it's been like a almost a month now I want to say since I, I uh, spawned these guys to bulk and this guy is still not contaminated, which is great because I was having problems with the poo contaminating really quickly, right? Maybe within two weeks or so. And this guy is completely not contaminated still. I also want to add though, that this guy had brothers and sisters that contaminated far, far back, right? Quite a while back. Um, so basically, but all of them though, generally, what, what really helped them last longer than my old grows with the poo is to switch to a 12 hour pasteurization but why exactly is it that this guy is still surviving whereas the whereas his brothers and sisters have already fallen long before like like two weeks before i want to say and that's because this is this guy actually went anaerobic for like the first five days colonizing so it didn't colonize at all uh, I put a little hole in there and I thought that was going to be enough, but it clearly wasn't. It wasn't colonizing at all. And when I opened it, it was like sticky. It was really, really sticky and it smelled uh, sweet, right? But uh, so I so I opened it up a little bit and then it, 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 it grew fine, right? And it still hasn't contaminated at all. So I don't know. I don't know how that affected it, but clearly it has affected it so that it's the only surviving member. Um, in terms of fruiting though, I don't have hopes for this guy anymore. They, they should have fruited a long time ago if they were going to. Um, and I'm also going to sort of change up the tech, I think, a little bit. Because the whole idea of this tech is to do with the perlite 
evaporating and thus creating some uh, air movement inside and then thus bringing in you know more fresh air inside uh, through the evaporation and getting rid of the co2 so um but it's kind of hard to do when the, the the tray itself is so big it's almost taking up the whole space so technically this tech should have like perlite up to here and like a lot of perlite like at least quite a bit of space of perlite on the side so that it increases the amount of evaporation going on so next time i'm not going to be using this tray i'm going to be using something smaller something smaller so i could cover perlite on all sides and that'll also make it easier to keep the perlite moist because i can't keep it moist like this uh, so yeah, working at the kinks, I'm also thinking about doing the same thing, but inside a shoebox with like smaller jars inside. So like basically a mini shotgun fruiting terrarium basically, um, without the holes. But with a shoebox, you know, it's, it's a lot closer to the air. So I don't think that we, I, I think that I could get away without making holes on it. So uh, we will see. And I have also uh, spawned two Mexican grass lovers. Uh, into a shoe box and as you can see the spawn to sub ratio is very low it's very low because uh, I just want to well first of all these guys don't need much in the first place but even considering that I, I kept it a little bit lower I just want to see how it goes so yeah that's basically uh, I think that's sort of uh, all I gotta say right now guys um, yeah there's some couple more experiments I'm thinking about going on to I spawned two poo lovers into uh shoe boxes as well and uh so yeah that's basically a, a little update for you guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video michael file sage check it out